In this tutorial, we're going to delve deeper into creating our own custom material instances and using the advanced settings to turn these four instances right here of the first simple preset into unique cell shading styles. For now, let's start with the basics. In every opaque material, we can customize the color of our object using this color parameter. If you have textures for your object, simply enable Use Base Color Texture and you'll find this texture parameter right here that you can modify using this Base Color Tint parameter. Let's however uncheck this. You can also modify the color of your highlights and shadows using these two parameters. By default, whatever you input here is getting multiplied onto your base color to form the final color of your object. You can also change this behavior by scrolling down to the miscellaneous category right here and enabling use override shading for highlights and rim lights or shadows. If you enable that, the highlight rim light color or the shadow color will directly determine the color that is on your object. On the metallic, you can enable if your object should be metallic or not metallic. If you have metallic enabled, you can also use the metallic color modulation strength parameter to control a gradient on your object that gives your object a little bit more depth. Once, once again, you can also use a texture to control this value. Under the highlight, rim light and shadow category, you can control the size of your highlights, your rim lights and your shadows using these parameters. The value of those parameters gets multiplied with the max value that is set in these advanced categories right here. So if we set our highlight size scale to 1, it won't go bigger than this value because this value down here is limiting it. If you increase this however, you'll get rid of this limitation. Additionally, you can use this anisotropic highlight parameter that controls how much your highlight gets stretched. Depending on if your value is positive or negative, the direction that the highlight gets stretched in changes. You can use this for effects like brushed metal or hair. Once again, all those parameters can also be controlled using textures if you enable these parameters right here. If you're coming from a PBR workflow where you have roughness and specular textures, what you can do is you can head to this 10th category down here, conversion, and enable use specular and roughness inputs. If you do this, you'll find that down here you'll find a roughness and a specular texture. If you now input your roughness and specular textures right here, an SRS will do its best to approximate the size of highlights and rim lights based on those inputs. You can use this if you're mass importing small little rocks, for example, that have roughness and specular textures, and you don't want to customize the highlight and rim light size scale on all of them. It is, however, recommended that for any important object, like for example characters, you modify the highlight and rim light size scale yourself to just get the best out of your cell shading. Moving on, you can also use the emissive color input right here, once again with a texture, to determine the emissive color ob of your object. I'm going to leave this disabled. Under the normal category, you can input a normal texture. For example, this Metal 11 texture that comes with SRS, and you can control its strength. In order to control how all your textures get mapped, you can go to the ninth category, Texture Mapping, and expand this texture scale and offset parameter. And here you can control the scale on the U and the V axis, the offset on both of those axes, and the texture rotation. Additionally, you also have the option to input a displacement map and control the strength and the tessellation for that using this category right here. And you can also use opacity masking to mask out certain areas of your objects using this category. Now, let's get into our first advanced style. For this style, I want to transition from shadow and from the highlights and rim lights to have another second step in between highlights and no highlights, shadows and no shadows. In order to do this, let's open our first advanced material right here. I'm going to set the color to something nice. And I'm going to increase the brightness of our highlights to something like 4. Okay, now to achieve this effect, go down to the 
advanced categories down right here. You're going to have to enable this gradient parameter and set it to gradient one step. Now you'll see that our shadows already have a different step. To make this step more visible, you're going to have to decrease the gradient strength parameter. This makes it so that our gradient, we input it right here, has less and less effect on the actual color of our object. It does, however, still do something else, and we'll get into that later. Now, for now, let's just set it to something like this. Now let's do the same thing for our highlights and rim lights as well. Okay, now we have the gradient on all of our effects. However, on the rim light, you can see that the bright part of the rim light is really small. To change this, we simply have to adjust the gradient start parameter. This looks much better. Let's do the same thing for the highlight as well. And with this, our effect is pretty much done. Let's move on to our second example. For this, I want some patterns to give some detail to our highlights, rim lights and shadows. First, let's set the color to something nice again. Increase the brightness of our highlights. And let's head to this seventh category right here, the pattern category. Let's set a pattern texture right here. And you'll see that there's already this pattern applied to all of those effects. Let's make it a tiny bit smaller. This looks much, much better. However, you'll find that in between our lines, the original color is still there. I'd like to fill that in using a pattern background. For this, let's scroll back to our advanced settings right here and enable the and enable the backgrounds using these SB or HB or RB strength parameters. The B stands for background. Our shadow should have something like 0 0.4 for value. Now you can see that the areas are filled in with a slightly less dark color. And let's do the same thing for our highlights as well. This already looks pretty good, however we can improve this a bit. You can see that the thickness of those lines is really thick and the, those parts in between are really thin. Let's make this a bit more balanced by modifying these pattern max thickness parameters. So let's start on our highlight. Let's set this to something like 0 0.5. This looks much more balanced. Maybe even try it at 0 0.4. This looks pretty good. So let's set this to 0 0.4 for all effects. And like this, our second example is also done. Let's move on to our third example. For this example, I want to combine the patterns and the gradients we used previously. Let's begin by setting the colors to something nice again. For this effect, let's use metallic and decrease the rim light size, decrease the highlight size, and increase the shadow size. Something like this. Alright. Now let's apply a pattern texture. I'm going to use the pattern texture dots and I'm going to set the scale to something like 4. This already looks much better. Now let's use the gradients to control the scale of these dots. Head down to the advanced categories once again and here let's set the gradient to smooth. And let's set the gradient strength to zero so the color of the dots doesn't change. Now if you look under the shadow, you'll see that the dots fade from large to small. Now let's add a background onto this effect. Set the background strength to something like 0 0.3 and you'll see that we have a background already enabled. But I'd like this background to look a bit more interesting, which is why I'm going to use a gradient on our background as well. For this I'm going to use the background stripes 2. And you'll see if you look very carefully, that here at the bottom there's a very strong part of this background, then it disappears and it is again right here. Let's modify this effect by increasing the gradient start, so it starts really close to the edge of these dots and has a small line right here. Let's increase the strength so it becomes a bit more visible, this looks good. Let's do the same thing for our highlights as well.
Let's do the same thing for the rim lights as well. One last thing we could do on this third style is customizing how our dots get smaller or maybe even bigger as they reach the end of our effects. For this we need to edit these two pattern max and min thickness parameters. If you increase this min thickness parameter, you control the thickness of your pattern at the part where your gradient has almost faded it out. The max thickness parameter controls the thickness on the other part where your gradient still is very strong. Let's however simply return this to the original settings. With this, our third and final style is pretty much complete. Before moving on to translucent, let's take a look of some of those last final settings you can use to customize your cell shading appearance. For metallic, you have a few parameters in the shadow settings. These are firstly these distance to edge parameters. These control the distance from your shadow to the rim light. There are two of those parameters to control how this distance changes depending on the size scale of your rim light. If you wish to decrease the distance from your shadow to your rim light, simply decrease this parameter and then quickly take a look what happens at the maximum rim light size scale. You'll see that there's so still a bit of shadow in here and it looks kind of strange, so let's simply set this um, max value, require distance at max RL size to 1. And now it should appear correctly. You also have these two parameters, the bend parameters. Those control the shape of the shadow in on metallic materials. For non-metallic objects, your rim light gets smaller as it gets closer to the shadow. You can control this behavior using the R size fade parameter in the rim light settings. If you set this to a value like 0, it does not get smaller at all, and if you increase this, it gets smaller a lot faster. Lastly, you have two more parameters right here. The first one, anti-aliasing strength, controls how your patterns get smoothed out. So if you increase this, you'll find that your patterns become a lot more blurry, if you decrease this, your patterns won't get smoothed out at all, but may look a bit pixelated. This other parameter, show highlights, rim lights and shadow, controls if your highlights and rim lights should be visible in this part, in this shadow. If we keep this disabled and we increase our shadow size scale, you'll see that those effects simply disappear under our shadow. If we, however, enable this, you'll see that they become visible even in the shadow. While everything we just did was on opaque materials, customizing translucent materials works exactly the same. There are only three significant differences. The first is that in translucent materials, you cannot switch between metallic and non-metallic. The second difference is the opacity controls you have in translucent materials. You'll find this category opacity right here in your translucent materials, in which you can in which you can control the opacity of highlights and your rim lights right here and the opacity of everything else. For example, if we set this to zero, it will still be able to see everything else. Likewise, we could do it the other way around so that our highlights and rim lights become hidden or simply less visible. The third and final major difference is this shadow Fresnel parameter right here, Fresnel strength. This controls how much your camera's view angle onto your object distorts the shadow. If we set this to zero, your camera's view angle does not change the shadow at all. If you set this to one, it becomes very extreme. Knowing all this, you're ready to create your own custom material instances using SRS for mobile.